now to the ENCA Money Desk. Good evening, Devon. Not surprisingly, the numbers confirming today, we saw the biggest slump in manufacturing in April. Yeah, you're quite right. I mean, it was expected, uh, but this number just gives us a measure of the damage done, Sally. Figures released today show the devastating effect of the country's lockdown on the manufacturing sector. So if you look at the graphic coming up, you'll see exactly how damaging the uh, lockdown was for many manufacturers. I mean, production at factories slumped the most on record during level five lockdown restrictions in April. The sector's output shrunk by almost 50%, according to Statistics South Africa. Iron, steel, and vehicle manufacturing were severely hit as factories were forced to stop production. Sally, also very interesting to note that 10% of employed South Africans work in the manufacturing sector, and analysts are expecting massive job cuts should the business environment not stabilize or improve in the medium term. Yes, economist Mialani Maluleke. Well, what this shows us overall is that I think if we think again in the context of overall GDP growth, we've already seen uh, the first quarter GDP data here in South Africa showing a contraction even before uh, these lockdown restrictions. And I think certainly when you look at uh, this data, it becomes really clear that we're going to see an even bigger contraction uh, in GDP. Uh, in, 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 in the second quarter. Uh, but, but, but that said, I have to say that, uh, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, some of the, the recent data that we've, we've seen in terms of how uh, the sector is responding to the relaxation of these lockdown restrictions, uh, the signs have definitely been encouraging. Uh, we've seen things like the APSA PMI, for, for instance, uh, you know, printing really strongly uh, in, in, in June, uh, perhaps indicating that there is uh, some gradual recovery uh, that is that is underway. In Let's focus now on house prices and uh, house prices are dropping in value. Yes, indeed. And remember those days where we had show houses all over the place? Well, a lot of restrictions on that. So that's another added worry. The economic impact again of COVID-19, Sally, will see property prices fall by about 5% this year. Uh, but FNB's latest property report says properties valued less than 750,000 Rand should be more resilient. Interest rates have been cut by 275 basis points, you'll know, so far this year. And the Reserve Bank did that to cushion against the impact of the virus. But consumers are still struggling, Sally. On average, for all South African properties, the final selling price was 12% below the asking price between May and June. About 60% of properties, though, in the bracket below 750,000 Rand, uh, fetched their asking price or more. Here's uh, an uh, FNB economist once again to tell us more about what's happening in that regard. We expect house prices to decline by around 5% this year, mainly as a result of the number of jobs, the massive number of jobs that we think we're going to lose um, due to the pandemic. But also, um, it's likely that given the heightened uncertainty around the economic outlook as well as the drop in security, it's likely that consumers will want to delay um, the purchasing of big item, big ticket items such as buying a house until this uncertainty lifts. So we think that this decline in, 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 in demand for property is going to be across all price segments, although we expect that price uh, properties that are priced below 750000 to feel better than uh, properties that are, priced, that are higher, pri higher priced properties. Um, and this is because um, in the lower priced segments, there tends to be more buyers than there are sellers. Supply in those, in those segments, it's, 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 there, tends to, there tends to be um, a supply deficit in, 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 in lower price segments, so there are always more buyers than there are sellers. So if you are a seller and your property is, is valued below 750000 there is a higher chance that you will get your asking price as opposed to higher priced, higher priced properties. So looking ahead, it's likely that this expected decline in, 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 in property prices as well as the very low interest rates is likely to start attracting new buyers at some point, although we think that uh, this pent-up demand is likely to be concentrated in highly sought-after areas and it's unlikely to be enough to replace what we think is going to be the lost demand due to the significant job losses. So certainly a buyer's market. Devon, how are the markets today? 
Look, we started off very well uh, in the morning, uh, Sally. The local market doing quite well uh, in the early hours of the opening, but uh, the JSC reaching its best level since February during that intraday uh, trade. It was tracking Asian markets. Now, why was that? Because of hope that there would be more stimulus measures from global governments across, and that, that certainly lifted sentiment, but soon everything flattened out, not a very rosy picture at the end of the day. Here's a look at the numbers, followed by some insights by market analyst Wayne McCurry. Well, an interesting day in the market. It started off with gold shares performing extremely well, but the gold price came off towards the end of the day, and really they came down, and banking shares took over. The old shares up very slightly on the day, and really driven by banks. The Rand's trading at 1694, which I suppose is one of the reasons why the banking shares have done well. Overseas, the share markets are actually coming under a little bit of pressure, down about 1.5% between the three of them. Brent oil is down 2.5% on, on the day, yet the Cecil share price hasn't really come under much pressure. Company news-wise, two bits of important news. Liberty 2 Degrees, major property company, owns many big shopping centres, said that their earnings for the six months to the end of June will be down about 70%, and then Aspen Pharmacare has paid a fine in the UK of about 40 billion rand. And uh, thank you very much for all that money news. And Devin, it's lovely to see you back in the office. <laughs> uh, good to be back. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Devin.